The Arab world is a loose yet complex amalgamation of 22 countries in which a pan-Arab identity is the proclaimed ideal. Its citizens share a common language, a common history, and believe that they share a common destiny. But in its search for unity, Arab society has been pulled in opposite directions. Past versus present, sacred versus secular, monarchy versus democracy. The story of the struggle for Arab unity is entangled with the modern history of the Middle East, and both are steeped in conflicting ideologies, revolution, oppression, betrayal, and war. Without a clear analysis of issues like identity, loyalty, and self-determination, can Arabs ever address the gap between the reality and dream of unity? بفتخر اني اكون عربي واخواني العرب في سوريا في مصر في الشعوب العربيه اغلبها يعني بتحب بعض طبعا هويتي الثقافيه والدينيه ولغتي العربيه والله احنا الحمد لله عرب كلنا مسلمين والحمد لله كل عربي له الدين ينتمي للدين المسيحي العربي ينتمي للدين المسلم شو اللي بيعمل الهويه العربيه هي الوحده العربيه Feeling that you belong to a universe that extends from Mauritania or Morocco in the west all the way to Iraq and Bahrain on the east. You do not respond or react the same way to something that happens in Iran or in Pakistan, even though these two countries share a lot with the rest of the Arab world. The religion, for example. And yet you do not react the same way as you do to events in Iraq or in Bahrain or in Qatar or in Morocco or in Algeria. And that is, again, that is a feeling of identity. It has a boundary, virtual boundary, a boundary that is more than geographic. It is emotional, sentimental, uh, virtual in that sense, moral boundary. The Arab world covers a vast geographic landscape. Great mountain ranges crisscross two continents, Africa and Asia, acting as barriers separating farmland and coastal strips from the virtually uninhabited deserts in a region stretching from the Atlantic shores of Morocco to the Gulf. Traditionally, the Bedouin of the deserts have had a totally different pattern of living in comparison with the people living in the great river valleys of Iraq and Egypt and the urban societies of the Mediterranean. But whatever differences Arabs have, they have three things in common. They all speak Arabic, 95% of them are Muslims, and all of them at some point and in different ways have wanted unity. The concept of a single unified Arab state has penetrated deep into the fabric of Arab society since the Arab Renaissance of the 19th century. This series is the story of how a few outstanding leaders and millions of people dared to imagine themselves to be Arabs in the face of first Ottoman repression and later the scheming of Western superpowers and their betrayals like the Sykes-Picot Agreement and the Balfour Declaration that led to the creation of the State of Israel. The titles of Arab unity encapsulate modern Arab history. It has been called Pan-Arabism, Arab nationalism, 
or just plain Arabism. Interchangeable titles for two basic objectives, political independence and unity as one people from Morocco in the west to Saudi Arabia in the east. A sense of Arabness has existed for as long as the Arabs have walked the stage of history. But who are the Arabs? And what does it mean to be an Arab? An Arab is any human being who speaks Arabic, who is born in an Arab country, whose ancestors tell him that he's an Arab, and who takes pride in being an Arab, and who has an Arab culture, an Arab way of life. The first Arabian use of the word Arab was found in Yemen and dates back two and a half thousand years. The word originally meant Bedouin and was applied to the nomadic as distinct from sedentary population. But by the time of the conquest that followed the death of the Prophet Muhammad in the seventh century, his successors wrote the name Arab large across the three continents of Asia, Africa and Europe, placing it in a vital chapter of human thought and endeavor. بالاساس العرب عندما خرجوا من الصحراء حضارتهم كانت حضاره ضحله يعني When the Arabs came out of the desert, their civilization was not yet established. مش انه ما عندنا حضاره ولكن لا تقاس بالحضارات المجاوره مثلا ما في we cannot compare it to that of Byzantine, or Persian, or Greek culture. But with the appearance of Islam and the Islamic conquest, Arab contact with these other civilizations was the beginning of a cultural exchange. This cultural exchange established a flourishing civilization and though its creators were not purely Arab or Muslim, its chief medium of expression was Arabic, and it was dominated by Islam and the Islamic outlook on life. During this first period in Islamic history, when Islam was an Arab religion and the Caliphate an Arab kingdom, the term Arab came to be applied to those who spoke Arabic, were full members by descent of an Arab tribe, and who either in person or through their ancestors had originated in Arabia. Over time and the rise of the Umayyad Caliphate, which we can call Arabic because the Arabs had the principal role in this caliphate, Everyone who wasn't Arabic was a second-class citizen, including non-Arab Muslims. So the identity of the nation was an Arab identity. Also, let me tell you that even in the army, only Arabs were allowed, Muslim Arabs. So the identity here was purely Arab. However, from the 8th century onward, this identity was changed from an Arab to an Islamic identity. Membership of the ruling group was now determined by faith rather than by origin. As increasing numbers of the conquered peoples were converted to Islam, the religion ceased to be the privilege of the Arabs and acquired the universal character that it has retained ever since encompassing non-Arab peoples such as the Ottoman Turks, who went on to dominate the region. And for nearly 400 years, Arabs became fully reconciled in the Ottoman Empire. Arabism as a concept started in the mid-19th century as a direct reaction to the decline of the Ottoman Empire, a reaction that would come to be known as the Nahda, the Arab Awakening. At the beginning of this century, with the fall of the Ottoman Caliphate, we asked ourselves, who are we? In the past, we had a religious identity, which changed into a national identity. 
and nationalism eventually came to replace or fill the gap left by the fall of the Ottoman Caliphate. أو لملء الفراغ الذي حدث نتيجة لانهيار الخلافة العثمانية